welcome everybody to this week's podcast, our Winning Online podcast, and this is Paul Slack. I'm the co-host, and I've got Ray Larson here with me, and let's go ahead and jump right into it. Ray, what are we going to be talking about today? This week, we're going to talk about the purpose quadrant of the balance scorecard. And As you recall, we started this whole series talking about putting your marketing on a quota, and the balance scorecard, as you explained to us, was a really easy tool and a quick way to see how you're doing. So each uh, the balance four card has four quadrants, and the purpose quadrant, in my opinion, and you might argue with me this one, is the most important of them all because it drives all the communication. What's your feeling on that? You know, absolutely, Ray. The, the, the purpose part of the quadrant is, is pretty important because at the end of the day, our websites uh, don't exist um, for any other reason than to accomplish uh, something positive for our customers as well as something positive for our business and so we really need to understand um, what is the purpose of our website if it's not a brochure it must be something else and then how do we quantify that so that we can measure uh, whether or not we're heading in the right direction so the um, and we have a couple of blog posts right now that you can check out on the, the uh, first of all about the balance scorecard and also on the purpose quadrant itself but we'll just try and summarize here that so we're trying to accomplish two things in this purpose quadrant. Uh, first of all, we're making an existential statement about why that blog, what, excuse me, why your website exists, what it's doing out there, and then the second thing we're trying to do is you just said is quantify everything. So let's start with the purpose of your website. I get kind of confused here about how you connect the dot between your mission statement and the purpose of your website because this is not a place to put your mission statement. But everything you do needs to tie into your mission statement. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And it goes back to um, when we started off this whole podcast series about uh, talking about macro and micro objectives and the importance of measurement. And, you know, the, the purpose quadrant is really all about um, identifying, um, going back to the analogy that I used before, from, you know, trying to get from Portland. Uh, to New York City. So New York City is the, is the purpose. It's something that we can clearly um, understand. We're either in New York City or we're not in New York City. And so our purpose quadrant has to have that kind of information. But just like you said, Ray, it's got to be tied to our mission statement because um, we, we may not have any reason to be in New York City. So we need to think about who we are as a business and really you know what is the why of our business and I tell you what you know you right you and I were looking at that really awesome um, YouTube video from a, a couple of weeks ago I think I'm gonna throw that uh, in the in the, the podcast blog summary that we do because it does a great job of helping businesses just think about the why the why is so important and so when you think about it, let's take Vindy social for a second um, you know our vision statement it really starts for us at the vision statement uh, is to make a difference and so what does that mean well we want to make the, a difference in the lives of our customers we want to make a difference in the lives of our employees and in the lives of our vendors and now how do we do that and that's where we get into our mission statement our mission statement is connecting customers to our clients and so that's what we do. We feel like it transcends the internet. That's why you don't hear us talk about social media or the internet in our mission statement. Um, but how do we jump from connecting customers to our clients uh, and to make a difference all the way uh, to a purpose statement? And so, you know, our purpose, um, looking forward into 2015, I'll just share with you guys is to is to bring 10 new clients. Uh, into the Vendi social fold, so that's that's what we're that's how we're going to measure our ultimate success uh, in 2015. And so, even as we look at our purpose statement or that quadrant, we want to understand how are we doing as it relates to that forecast. And so, um, I've got forecast on the brain right now because I've been working on our 2015 uh, uh, forecast and business plan. And so, I know exactly how many clients we're planning on. Um, connecting with in the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, and whatever that number is, that's what's going to be on our P quadrant or our first P in the balanced scorecard is what is our purpose. It's to generate uh, this many new customers because when we generate customers uh, that we can work with, well, our mission statement says we're going to connect customers to them, uh, which helps us fulfill what they're trying to do. They're going to, in exchange, pay us money 
uh, so that we can help connect them to their customers. And in exchange for that, we're going to be able to pay our employees, and we're going to be able to hire vendors. And, and so we're able to connect to our ultimate vision, which is making a difference. We're making the difference in the lives of our customer. Uh, by connecting them to their customers. We're making a difference in the lives of our team because we're providing a job uh, as well as the vendors that we are able to bring on. And so that's how we're able to connect those dots. I think uh, as a business owner, you know, sometimes you get so wrapped up on the day-to-day -day stuff, making payroll, satisfying customers, uh, employee relations, employee issues, taxes, that you just kind of forget you know, why you're there. And I think it's important that all the team members know exactly, you know, what what at least on the internet team, what the purpose of that website is, and what the the goal is for that particular uh, operation, that part of the business. So speaking of goals, uh, the second part of that is the macro objective. You are a big proponent about making sure that this is done quarterly, a quarterly review. Why? I mean, why quarterly? Why not monthly or just having a year-end goal? What, what's the advantage of having a quarterly goal? Well, Ray, um, I'm sure you've heard this phrase because I think I've used it with you before, analysis paralysis. Um, I found that if you look at this kind of data more than quarterly, uh, now granted, behind the balance scorecard are action items and tasks and milestones and things that we need to be measuring on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, but getting your team together for your balanced scorecard meeting, that should happen once a quarter. And by the way, somebody should really own, ultimately, each one of the quadrants of the, bal of the balanced uh, scorecard. Uh, so in, in our case at Vindy Social, I kind of own uh, the, the purpose quadrant. It's up to me to come up with uh, the purpose and actually come up with that number. And ultimately, I, I am accountable to my team on whether or not we're achieving that objective. And so uh, there's a lot more that goes into that. But why do we look at it once a quarter is that we, we want to avoid analysis paralysis. And the reason why we want to look at it every quarter is that when you're looking at something big like a purpose statement or your purpose, um, your macro goal as it relates to purpose, um, it's going to change quarter over quarter. Like, for example, I mentioned to you that our purpose um, for 2015 is going to be uh, to connect with and, and bring in uh, to the Vendi family 10 new clients. And so we're not planning on doing that two and a half clients. First of all, you can't hire or bring on half a client. Uh, we're not planning on doing that two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half for 10. We've actually got a smaller number in Q1 uh, than we do in Q4 and a, actually a different number in, in Q3 than we do uh, in Q2. So that's why we want to look at it once a quarter because it's going to be different each quarter, but the ultimate, you know, at the end of the year, you're looking for that number 10 uh, to actually happen. Does that make sense, Ray? Yeah, it makes sense. And I want to tie this back to the whole balance scorecard. So the balance scorecard has four quadrants, the purpose, profit, people, and production. So what happens if we don't hit those quarterly goals. Do we readjust it? Do we readjust the goal? Is I mean, how does the profit? Excuse me. How does the purpose quadrant fit in things? What, how does it get adjusted? Or is it a living, like everything? Is that a living document? Is that particular quadrant? Of course, your purpose isn't going to change, but your objectives could change. Correct? I guess right. that's what I'm trying to get at. Well, so, and that's exactly why you have a tool like this. So that, that's an excellent question because the whole reason you have a balanced scorecard is so that you can manage by exception. Um, what we're trying to do, and it goes back to that torpedo analogy that you probably are getting tired of me uh, talking about, is, you know, our torpedo is never on course. It's constantly making correction, but it's an incredibly accurate weapon. Um, so it moves to the left until the servo says you need to move to the right, and it makes those adjustments, and it ultimately hits its target. Well, a balanced core card is the same thing as the servo uh, on that torpedo that allows you to correct course. And so what you're looking for are those anomalies, because when you go, and just starting with the purpose, you know, let's say that our goal was to um, bring on two new clients in the first quarter, and we only brought on one client. Well, obviously, we're not hitting our objective, and so we can then go look to the other three quadrants to begin to see which of those um, variables that are ultimately leading up to the primary purpose um, are breaking down, because you're going to find there's going to be something along the way um, that's not 
uh, hitting the target. And that's what's going to give you the ability to then hone in on those areas that we're not achieving our micro objectives and go, why not? And, it, and that's management by exception. And the whole idea and the reason why you have owners for each of the different quadrants is that when you miss your mark somewhere, you're now able to bring the brain power of all these other individuals to help you kind of fix whatever that one area is. And so if everything's working great, you hit your two clients for the quarter, all of your other metrics are good, it didn't cost you too much for those customers, uh, then great, your balance scorecard meeting is going to last 10 minutes. But if, it's, if something's not working, that's when the power of the balance scorecard comes into play because it helps you find it and see it, but then helps you very quickly hone in to that metric that you need to really address uh, with the brain power of your team. Well, let me throw an example by you, and you can shoot it full of holes if you think I'm on the wrong track. So let's use the example of getting two and a half clients per month. Uh, so we go to our quarterly meeting, and our quarterly meeting we should have two and a half per month. Uh, excuse me, it's two and a half per quarter. I'm sorry. And we find that we have got zero new clients. Uh, we've been busy doing other things, uh, maintaining our client relationships, and we have zero. So we go back through the the balance scorecard, and we look at profit, and uh, we look at our people, and we look at our production, and we find that our podcast, which drive a lot of traffic to our website, um, we didn't do any that quarter. So is that the right, am I looking at this the right way? Right, you're looking at it exactly the right way. Um, because, you know, and, and, and as you mentioned, the, the four P's really come into play here. So we, we missed our, our, our purpose. Um, so then maybe we could go back and say, well, did we hit the right number of leads or, you know, did we hit the right number of leads? Um, yes or no, and if we didn't hit the right number of leads, then we need to go back and say, well, why didn't we hit the right number of leads? Did we not have enough traffic? Um, maybe that's a, uh, under the people quadrant. Maybe that's the, the objective. We, oh, we, we were expecting you know, 10,000 visitors a quarter um, from social media and search, and we only had um, you know, 100. So now let's go try to figure out why, why did we only have 100 when we were expecting 10,000? And then that might lead you all the way back to the to the production quadrant where you go, well, gosh, we didn't we didn't add any blogs to our website, or we didn't do uh, anything in social media, we didn't buy any pay per click, we didn't do the things that we were supposed to do um, to drive people to it. Now, you know, the one thing that uh, you asked a little bit earlier, Ray, is do you make adjustments? And I think um, you do make adjustments, but I would be um, uh, very slow to make adjustments. You know, as we think about purpose, I'm going to be very slow to make adjustments there. So just kind of moving down the P's, um, maybe may, I, I'm more quick to make adjustments in the production side uh, and less and less quick to make adjustments moving up the, the balance core card. Uh, but ultimately, I think if you miss a mark two quarters in a row, then it's time to make some serious adjustments about where your business is going because now you're half a year down the road. Well, that's uh, okay. So now I, I, I think I got a very good understanding of this, and uh, I think that we're uh, ready to move on to our next quadrant, which will be the profit quadrant. And next week, we're going to, our next podcast, excuse me, we're going to talk about that. Uh, and we thank you for joining us. Paul, any other last uh, comments you want to make to our audience? Well, you know, first of all, it's getting towards the end of the year. We're not going to do another podcast um, this year. So happy holidays to everybody. Thank you for listening in. But, man, this is the time. So I just encourage all of you to take uh, the month of December and really spend some time asking the why. And out of the why is going to come the purpose. And then tune in, and we'll, figure out, we'll help you figure out how to connect that purpose to profit. So we'll see you next week.